<laughs> you, you understand, mother... Because the New Testament is utter horse... It's created by a bishop and a an emperor. Welcome back to another video from Amber and the Truth. I am your host, Amber, and what we do here is expose the truth, the gospel truth that is. And today, I'm going to be reacting to a video um, about Joe Rogan and what he said about the Bible. Now, all I know about Joe Rogan is uh, Fear Factor. When I was a child, Fear Factor was lit. That was the thing. He was like, you. It was wrestling and it was Fear Factor. And <laughs> Fear Factor was enjoyable to watch, especially eating and doing all weird type of things. But I had no idea he was a comedian. And within the last 10 years, he has blown up ridiculously. Like, people really care about what this man talk about, what he say. So, um, I don't really pay attention to him like that. But anybody that's discussing my father, his word, or anything like that, I want to wanna know what they got to say. So, let's just jump into it. We're about to do it. Um... All right, y'all. Let me make the bigger let's just jump into you up seven minutes okay not too long ago i came across a clip of joe rogan talking about his thoughts that he had about christianity which i reviewed on this channel a few months ago but more recently a different clip of him talking about christianity popped up in my feed and after seeing that one i think it's clear that joe really doesn't appreciate christianity you, you understand mother because the new testament is utter horse it's created by a bishop and a fucking emperor. That's a fact. Now, after seeing this other clip, I'll be honest, I just couldn't resist. I knew that I found my next video topic. So let's get right into it, but let's start on a higher note. Let's start with what I believe was the most accurate point that he made in this video. Mm. A lot of that God talk is a type of arrogance. It is definitely a type of arrogance, and it's also a way that people establish the moral high ground. Yeah. They establish a dominant social position over you. That is and the... um. He has a point. We are arrogant because, but it's not a negative arrogant. I know y'all think of arrogant like you th you're a know-it-all. I don't know everything, but I know the truth. And the reason why we're arrogant with it is because it's the truth. Regardless if nobody else believes it, the truth is still the truth. And we walk around in that type of boldness because we ought to. I, I walk around like I have the creator of the world right next to me because he is right next to me. He ain't never left. And what people about. And I think that was I think that was one of the issues of the Pharisees when it came to Jesus is because he walked around arrogantly. He knew what he was talking about. He was tr I and the father are one. No man shall come into the father but by me. Like what's the problem? You know what I'm saying? It didn't it didn't click for the Pharisees. It didn't click like, oh, he's God. Oh, he's. A supernatural being it didn't click that's why it was came off as arrogant he called himself the king of the jews well he is he's king of everybody really but you, you they, people think it's arrogance negative arrogance because it's like oh you think you know it all i do not all of it but i know enough about this world that you think that you know but you have no idea you spiritual third eye people have no idea how this world really works and you think you do and then you look down on us who are preachy or Jesus-y, or Sky Daddy, or whatever y'all want to call it as insults us. It's, it's funny. People love to do that. They love to do that with their pious attitude. What they're doing is, by by them accepting these religious tenets, they they're are not religious. superior to you. All right, so first off, when Joe starts talking about religious people using their religious views as a way to feel superior to others, he's 100% right about that. Some religious people come across as believing that because they accept some certain religious tenets, mm -hmm. that they're somehow superior to others that don't. That much is true. But at the same In a sense, yeah. I feel like the other religions, because what I'm talking about is not a religion. I'm talking about a relationship. So the arrogance is mistaken for boldness. That's what it is. I'm walking around like I know I'm walking in truth. Regardless of whether you believe it or not, it's still the truth. And I'm walking like I'm untouchable in a sense, because I kind of am. I got the protection of the creator. And I know y'all look at that like. So you think nothing can get to you in a sense? Yes. I know I'm not exempt from from life happening to me, but I also have peace. So if it does, I'm not destroyed. I'm not distraught. And in other religions, it's a it's a work thing. You have to look like you're a good person 
in order to be a good person with this religion, with, with the, with this relationship I'm talking about. I don't have to act like nothing. I'm not acting when you see me be non cussing no more or, 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 or not talking de- nasty or not listening to vulgar music anymore. It's because it's not an act. I'm not acting like anything. It's literally who I am now. I am a whole new creature and they don't get that part. They don't, they think you just changed in a sense of a physical realm. Yeah, I did change, but in a spiritual way, I'm a whole new person. I'm not Amber's oh Amber dead and gone. She ain't coming back. So I, I get it. I get what he's talking about. Same time. I can see how someone could say the same thing yeah. about people like Joe. At least in the clips of him talking about Christianity, he comes across as believing that by him rejecting the religious tenets that he's somehow superior to religious people. He comes across that way when he says stuff like, if you just read the story about a, a guy who was magic, who could turn water into wine, who could heal Not a people. guy, wow. What do you do with fish? Do you give people fish or some shit? Make some fish? The whole thing's so stupid. Just stop and think how f***ing stupid that is. It's not thinking. Because if you're thinking, you can't accept it. Like, hit the brakes. Aren't you grown adults? Like, you guys are, you're into nonsense? So you're into nonsense. Is that what this is? Because this is, you're showing nonsense. The truth is, is that everyone, including those like Joe, we all have a tendency to look down on others and to feel superior to people who don't share our same views. So yeah. this tendency isn't necessarily unique to religion, but it is sometimes easier to spot it in religion. We all have a natural tendency to look down on others who have different beliefs than we do, which is why a lot of the time we tend to ridicule the things that we don't understand well if they're coming from people that we disagree with. For mm-hmm. example, listen to some of the reasons that Joe gave in support of his view that Christianity is ridiculous. The f- president of the United States can openly talk about God right. and, every, and, no, and no one goes, what is God? What are you saying? Like, yeah. what are you saying? Do you think Jesus came back from the dead? What, what do you think? If you're thinking, you go, wait, what? He came back from the dead? Has anyone ever done that? Three days? Came back from the dead. I don't think you can do that. We actually already addressed the question of miracles and the resurrection in the last video that we did on Joe. If there were no reasons and evidence to believe that Jesus came back from the dead, then I would agree with his sentiment. But the truth is, is that there's plenty of good reasons for why Christians can rationally accept that Jesus was raised from the dead that Joe seems to not be aware of in these clips. I won't get into too much detail here, but we have... And and, and what's crazy is that when people don't want to know the truth, they do anything to dispute it, to discredit it. There's physical proof that they have found that jesus walked this earth the 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 crown of thorns his last garment his robe hell they even found the ten commandment palettes like (laughs) these things exist and then if you come to people with these facts and artifacts and you tell them they're like well anyone could have made that like people who like don't don't want to accept the truth will literally find anything i can i'm telling you this is red and I can, and someone will literally try to convince me that it's not simply because they don't see it how I see it. And that's just facts. People don't want to accept the truth and we can't force them. So Facts ranging from the genuinely believed post-mortem appearances of Christ after his death to the explosion of the church out of nowhere in the first century to the conversions of James and Saul and a host of other historical facts that we can base our beliefs on. I'll link some more sources down below, but leaving that aside for now, let's keep going. Do you think someone walked on water? Do you believe in the literal translation? Yeah. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Well, I thought New Testament. No, well, the New Testament was made by Constantine, who was a f-ing Roman emperor who wasn't even Christian. Mm. He didn't even believe it. He was, he was, he was, he was, he became a Christian on his f-ing deathbed. Like that's when he became a Christian. So I would agree with that, you about shouldn't how that say something? this Christianity would be if this were true. If someone don't believe God their whole life and then on a deathbed they do, that's not a coincidence. That's that's isn't there the story of uh the who created the satanic church? I think the guy who created the satanic church, Satanists, literally realized he was wrong on his deathbed. He realized he was wrong and it was too late by then. Hmm. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't tell y'all nothing. They don't give y'all nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, given that I understand him correctly, he's saying that a guy named Constantine made up the New Testament, and he didn't even believe in the New Testament that he made up mm. until he converted to believing in it on his deathbed. 
Is he saying that Constantine invented a lie, but then somehow he converted to that lie? It's no wonder that he sees it as ridiculous because that doesn't even make any sense. Don't. Even if we did believe that, it still doesn't make any sense to say that Constantine made the New Testament because the New Testament has multiple authors in 27 Facts. different books. Facts. So I would guess that Joe is probably aware of this. And if that's the case, then what he must be referring to is either that Constantine established what books go into the New Testament or that Constantine, when he called for the Council of Nicaea, somehow the Council of Nicaea was where they established the New Testament. But even if this was Joe's argument, neither Constantine nor the Council of Nicaea had anything to do with what books belonged in the Bible. So I honestly don't know where Joe's getting this information. They just be making stuff up top of the head, I promise you. <laughs> he's confused about this or he bought into some weird conspiracy that he picked up online somewhere. But anyways, listen to what he says next. You understand, motherfucker, what the difference is between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Because the New Testament is utter horse that's created by a bishop and a fucking emperor. That's a fact. Uh, no, it's that's not. A, that's not a fact. religious fact. No, it's not. <laughs> like, everyone knows where it came from. And not only that, it's it was 40, over 40 different authors of the book. Okay, so... Here's the, here's the thing. People would like to discredit the Bible as far as, oh, it's a book and you can't really trust it. And it's written by multiple people and stuff like that. Name a book where it has 40 different authors written in different times of a uh, period of t period of times, like literally hundreds of years apart, where they all coincide, make sense and can reference each other. There's not a single book like that that exists that's alive. It don't. If 40 people write a book today, you give them a topic, and you tell them to write on this topic, and all 40 of them write a book and it come together, it's not going to make sense. Because 40 different people have 40 different ways of seeing something, 40 different ways of expressing something. So them putting it together and making a book and making it make sense won't make sense. You can make it make sense. But you have to edit it and you have to twist the way you word things and you have to intricately try to make it make sense. The Bible just makes sense. The reason why you don't want to believe it's true, because if you have to believe it's true, then you have to believe that you take accountability for the things you've done on this earth. And then if you have to take accountability for the things you've done on this earth, then heaven and hell is real. And then you know you're on your way there. That is why most people don't care to try to fully understand or to believe because then they have to be accountable for themselves and nobody wants to be accountable that's the number one thing people avoid is accountability of course oh joe think about this if the new testament were really written hundreds of years after the death of jesus then how is it that we actually have manuscript fragments from the early second century not mm -hmm. to mention that scholars will even date the last letter that was written in the new testament revelation they'll date that somewhere around 80 or 90 AD. And even then, that's remarkably early for how their culture transmitted information at that time. So even taking liberal dates, we're still within the first century. So I have no idea where Joe got this idea about them being written hundreds of years later. Now, honestly, we could go on for a while, but I think you get the point. Granted, this clip is a bit older, I believe. So I assume that he's probably learned about his errors since this was recorded. But the point that I wanted to make was how susceptible we all are to this way of thinking. I completely agree with what Joe said earlier about how some believers tend to feel superior to others because of their beliefs and i would stand with joe on this point those types yeah. of christians tend to forget that they're saved by grace which mm -hmm. is a free gift and that they couldn't earn their salvation by anything that they did so mm -hmm. if they couldn't earn it and they only accepted it then how could they possibly feel superior to others simply because they have salvation? that's that prize in reality, in. they shouldn't and if anything, Christianity should actually make us more humble, not more arrogant. To get Thanks. a better idea of what I mean when I say that, go ahead and check out this video where I talk about it in more detail. But the next time you find yourself ridiculing these things that you simply don't understand very well, what are you going to say? What do you mean? Yeah. I like the way he broke it down. I'm not sure if that's how Joe Rogan officially talks. Or not, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that's how he talks, but what I do know is that um, a lot of people think like Joe Rogan. A lot of people think like that. The Bible's not real, and it's written by multiple people, and all type of good jazz. And all I have to say is, read it for yourself. 
people who talk about the Bible and who have something to say negative or come at you with the scripture never really opened it and read it for themselves. And the Bible says, in the Bible it says that a regular day, like I don't know the scripture, that's what I need to focus on. Trying to, <laughs> what I need to focus on trying to remember scriptures. But there's a scripture that basically says the carnal mind cannot understand the Bible. So even if you go and read it for yourself and you're in your flesh, you, you won't even understand it. It'll be gibberish to you. You will not get it. Even if you read plain English ones, you will not get it. It is, it is the spirit that illuminates you, the Holy Spirit, that allows you to understand what you're reading and take heed and then apply it to your life. But it's always, it's always people talking mess about the Bible, always coming at people left and all type of stuff. And look, here's the thing I got to say. As a Christian, he's right. We do walk around like we're, we're, we're better just because we have Christ. We're not. I still sin. Very much so. And, um... We need to be more humble when we walk around because you may be the only point of Jesus they run into that day. The only one. And you over here acting like you're bigger and better than them just simply because of what you know. Even though it is the truth and we're allowed to walk in boldness, but we are not allowed to walk in pride. That is the literal fall of man is pride. Literally the fall of evil, the beginning of it is pride. Thinking that you're better and you could be better. The devil literally sat up there in heaven and looked at God and was like, I'm going to be him. What kind of pride it takes for you to think you're just going to be an intelligent being just because. It's like you yourself thinking you're going to be your mama. There's no way you can be your mother. There's no way you can be your father. You can be you. You can act like him. You can dress like him. But you can never be them. So I think as Christians, we have to remember that we are saved by grace. It is grace alone that keeps us walking, breathing, and talking. That is it. I don't... What he gave me, I don't even deserve it. I don't. I deserve to be in hell. I deserve to be on my way there. But he loved me so much, he decided... It was like, nah, I ain't gonna send you there. I love you too much. You know, get your stuff together. And I did. You know what I'm saying? So, this walk is 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 very different. And it's kind of complicated. And in and, and, and different ways and stuff like that. But it's always worth it. Always worth it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you're new. Hit the subscribe button for new content every week. And as always, I will see you and you will see me next time. Peace.